recording, okay? All right, good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Long Range Planning Committee meeting of December the 8th, 2023. Um, our first item on the agenda this morning is to the review the minutes of November 17th, 2023. Does anybody have any comments, changes, additions? Move to accept. We have a move to accept. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Thank you, Marvin. Portia was the first. Um, any discussion? I think they're very good minutes. Okay. Yeah, they were good. Um, if there's no other discussion, I would ask all in favor, please raise your hand. I can't see you, Robin, so. Uh, Alan, I'll, I'm going to abstain because I wasn't there. Okay, that's fine. So we have one, two, three, three approved. Any no votes for approval? No, and one abstention. I'm not even sure. Am I a voting member as an alternate? Uh, Only if needed, right? Today I would be needed, because yes. it's not a quorum. Got it. We have a quorum. We have a quorum. We have a quorum without without me without over. you, Robert. Gotcha. So we are good. So three A's, one abstention. All right. Next item on the agenda is to actually. I'm going to add one. I'm going to welcome Robert to Long Range Planning Committee this morning. Uh, Rob, uh, Robert, can you give us thirty second overview of who you are? Sure. Why, why we have you here? Excellent. <laughs> even sixty seconds. Sixty. Uh, even sixty. Geez, be yeah. careful what you wish for. Now I can go sixty one seconds. Yeah. Uh, so I am a uh, Scarborough resident of I think now twenty years. Uh, and I'm a commercial fisherman. I own two vessels, both moored in the Scarborough River. And I've been involved in citizen advisory boards for 30 years. Uh, I've participated in many different commercial fishing endeavors, mostly sea urchin diving, offshore ground fishing, and near shore and offshore uh, lobstering. I also scallop drag. So the, uh, the citizen advisory um, process has always intrigued me. I think, uh, you know, it's a bit like jury duty. Everybody does their part. However, not everybody's cut out for it, has the uh, sort of uh, appetite and uh, capability. And I feel like I do have that uh, patience and uh, uh, level of uh, diplomacy that can handle most anything. I'm the last of eight children, so <laughs> I think that may predispose me to having good uh, skills in the uh, diplomacy front. I'm a father of two wonderful kids in the Scarborough school system, and I want to make sure Scarborough is a vibrant, uh, growing, but not growing too fast community that I do enjoy living in. And uh, yeah, I, I originally wanted to be on the Coastal Waters Committee, seeing how I am a fisherman and I actively fish out of the Scarborough River, uh, but that committee's full as well as their alternates. So I decided, since I am very interested in long range planning of our wonderful town, and honestly, the first, the, what, what intrigued me most, <laughs> what, what, what leaned me to decide to, to apply for this committee was the fact that sea levels are rising albeit slowly, but the threat that they're going to rise faster is going to uh, probably, you know, lean our hand closer to adjusting our roads. I went, uh, because Autumn let me know there was a main DEP meeting, DEP meeting about a month ago, talking about the uh, Route 1 uh, potential uh, you know, add on to the road as well as Pine Point Road. Well, I, I live off Pine Point Road and I ride on Route 1 at Pine Point four, six, eight times a day sometimes, depending on errands and kids and sports on off days when I'm not fishing. So, you know, that's, you know, near and dear to most everybody in this room. If uh, Autumn, you said you drove Route 1, maybe, I don't know if you went across the marsh, but most of us have a tendency to do so. And yeah, so that's why I'm here. Okay. 
Awesome. Well, welcome aboard. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll jump into the next item and discuss and make a recommendation for appointment to the ad hoc open space committee. Autumn, do you want to take sure. this on? So the council adopted a resolution 3530 a few months ago, and that is 30% of the town's, the goal of 30% of the town's land to be conserved in some manner. And so we are embarking on a open space master plan. The RFQ, the request for call, qualification will go out uh, probably at the beginning of January. And part of that charge, the council wanted us to have an ad hoc committee to work on that. It's a volunteer position probably from January to September of next year. Uh, it's gonna be a group I anticipate that starts off probably with a couple of meetings. It's a consultant led uh, process. We don't have the consultants or anything to that matter, but um, they'll be meeting probably pretty regularly throughout the process. So I'd say two or three meetings in the beginning and then one meeting throughout. I'm sure that we'll have a Zoom option. So find um, some opportunity for some flexibility for folks. But yeah, there's nine members and there's a list, uh, one from conservation, one from parks and conservation land board, community services. Long Range, Shellfish, Coastal Waters, the Land Trust, Scarborough Marsh, Prince, and then Fish and Egg. So we need to nominee, nominate someone who would like to serve on that committee. And then um, January, I've asked all the groups to give us the names by January 8th, and then council can take action on the 17th. <laughs> I know that we mentioned this last month. We talked about having people think about what they could and could not do. Uh, I don't know if there is anybody who has had enough time to consider whether they wanted to be involved or not. Have you heard anything in terms of somebody who might want to raise their I hand? I have not heard from any of you. <laughs> <laughs> no one's raised their hand on this one. Um, I think it's a really important committee to be on from a perspective of, you know, really first, one of the first things we're gonna do, there's a lot of discussion about what is actually considered open space, you know, is HOA held lands, is it state land, is it water, is it areas of, you know, sea level rise and how, where do we count the line? And so that'll be important and then for this group moving forward, one of the biggest things that will come out of that open space plan is recommendation for ordinances that need to change or need to be amended or maybe an open space impact fee or something like that. So there's a some potential for some work to come to this committee yeah. after that. So it would be you know, it'd be great for someone really to consider. When you mentioned the first person that came to my mind on the board would have been Rick. He's been actively involved with open space with the land trust. And I didn't know if that was something that he would be interested in or not. Um, if nobody has raised their hand, I would reach out to him. Okay. And see if that is something he would be interested in. Um, All right, what's the time commitment? Uh, January through September. Give or take a monthly, bit. probably monthly meetings, probably two or three to get started with the consultant to kick off meeting and so on. And then I'm assuming once a month, maybe skip a month or two, depending on the milestones, how the consultant set it up. Any, um, any inference on time of day? I have no, no. Kind of still early. Yeah, yeah. It'll depend on who the makeup is of the committee too. It might be, um, I'm, I'm assuming it'll be during the day mm -hmm. based on the committee members. Um, I'm not sure. <clears throat> Another question, um, um, mostly for you, you all as staff. I, three like staff. Yeah. How much uh, foresight do you guys look when you're planning different uh, committees to other cities? Like, do you look sort of south or west of Scarborough or even south or west of Maine in the town's slightly larger population wise? kind of come up with ideas because I always like to think, well, if they've already done it once, maybe we can learn a little bit from them. Um, I was kind of, you know, obviously I'm very new here and I was reading up on the minutes and I'm like, wow, that sounds like a, a really a zoning committee versus a long range planning. I know both go in one, you know, go in hand in hand. 
and, and of course, uh, I want as much open space available for vegetation and for carbon uh, sequestration and keep the marsh uh, there to absorb floodwaters, all those things. Um, but it seems like there's almost redundancy now going on. Um, I don't know if I'm, if I'm alone in this thought process, but I guess there I'm seems to be a bit of you know, committees and several committees. I know that <laughs> it was like, what is there, 10 or 12? Or... There's, a, there's a lot of yeah, committees. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I personally agree, there's a lot of committees mm -hmm. um, and I get to staff a lot of committees, but I think um, this one is a special project. So it's a side, it's a, there's an end to it. It's okay, not an so ongoing. Saying. Yeah, it's okay. just for the master plan. Okay. So we also have- a So it's a short term? It's a short term commitment. Month. Yeah, January through September. Okay. And then we'll have this open space plan and then that committee will dissolve and yep. then regular work. And just for, for since you're new, the long range planning committee, they're really tar uh, tasked with ordinance review and ordinance revisions. And while it seems like right now our focus has been a lot of zoning and site plan work, the work that we've been doing the last several months really does have a long range impact on the community as far as development and how it proceeds and how it looks and how the town grows. So I think you'll, you know, we, we have a, I've only been here almost a year and a half now, and we've gone through a lot of different things, but we're, we're getting to the end of wrapping up our commercial design standards process. Um, and that is all front end planning board approval stuff. And so it's, I think I look at development in a 30 year cycle. You have once every 30 years, you get an opportunity to do something. And so we're really trying to take a look at what that, what new things look like and feel like and function like. Uh, and if we get to it, I don't know if we'll get to it in the agenda, but there's a lot of slides, uh, pictures of a slideshow of just talking about Route 1 and talking about site layout. And from my perspective, a lot of missed opportunities and a lot of inconsistency. And so that's been some of our efforts recently to really create a consistent, what is Scarborough when it grows up sort of discussion and I would add like a major component of this committee um, really is implementation of the comprehensive plan as well whether that's coordination of you know making sure other committees are working on specialty sections but that coordination function resides um, in the long-range planning uh, committee's charge this right. one is an ongoing per 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 perpetual right. forever gotcha. and ever. <laughs> I would say too about a lot of committees there is overlap of, of um, information or impacts, but each of the committees, I'm also on transportation, each of the committees uh, has a focus. And while we have to work cooperatively together, each committee has a particular focus to make sure that that piece is not overlooked. And so while uh, long range planning or transportation or whatever, other committee may make some recommendations, it needs to go through some of those also adjacent committees that are also impacted for the feedback. So we get a lot more um, perspective that okay. way. Great. I agree with you that, some, that recently our focus has not felt as though it's the 35,000 foot view of long range mm -hmm. in this film. So we are on route one and looking at here, here, here. That isn't always the case, but my, my personal opinion as a member, it would be nice to return to a little higher level view to engage with how does this affect the five-year plan or the 10-year plan because our planner understands that. Uh, and I trust her that our nose to the grindstone is, is important, but I don't particularly understand it sometimes. So I you know, suggest that we follow what I take your saying that <clears throat> long range thinking into the day to day, maybe a twitch more. At least I understand it as being. I do have a question about committees though. Now I, I'm digressing, but only for example, Alan, uh, and speaking of redundancy, I'm representative of the committee on the transportation committee, yet we have a fellow committee member who's on the transportation committee. And 
for instance, if I didn't have obligations on the transportation committee, I'm happy to have it. I learn a lot there. I, I would be interested in this, uh, but I just um, spread too thin to, yeah. to do that again. Well, we also got to make sure you get no, three yeah, appointments. And I so mean, and the council's in a, in, infinite in wisdom, so they may not choose so, to have me back. Yeah. But the, uh, yeah. All right. No, I get it. I'm just talking about uh, longer range thinking yep. on the committee we might consider down the road if Portia would be agreeable to it to both be the transportation. Well, she can't be. Yeah. They won't let us do yeah. it. They I can't do it. I do want to I do want to get to Robin though. I know that she's been wait patiently waiting, Robin. Thank you. Um, I'm just wondering, are there, um, it, you know, in, in your crystal ball, I guess, Karen and Autumn, do you see any other ad hoc committees coming up in the next uh, six to nine months? Because I'm sort of wondering the same thing that Marvin is. Um, this is the only committee that I'm on, but um, if there are other committees that come up, you know, I don't want to sell myself short and overcommit. Um, but I, I was just wondering if there are other ad hoc committees that will be added. I don't think so. We can't think of anything, Robin. Uh, the community services, there's an ad hoc committee ongoing for that project. Um, and our vulnerability, we don't have, we'll just have part of members of a steering committee. Um, so there will be a small opportunity there, but it's not set by council, the membership. Um, this is the only one I can think of. Um, in that case, I, I would consider um, it, but I don't want to override uh, our chair's um, recommendation for uh, Rick Shannon. Well, I, I, again, it's, it's not my intent to appoint at this point, because if, if we do something like that, we may not get the participation that we want based on people's other schedules. So uh, my only suggestion was if nobody was raising their hand, that I would reach out. So and some um, of it may depend on when the committee is going to is going to meet. Yeah, because if it's daytime versus nighttime, mm -hmm. that does have an impact. Yeah. Right? I personally would like it to be daytime. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I can't you understand. I have a little. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I think based on depending on the members, we might be able to swing that, or at least the late afternoon. Yeah, go for it, Robin. <laughs> um, It'd be superb, obviously. I, I, I'd consider it. Yep. All right. Uh, if we can find out more information in terms of scheduling. Well, I won't have that. I just need you all to pick somebody and trust me. Okay. <laughs> you meant, you meant, I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. I, that a yes or no. Marvin asked if I was interested, and I'm certainly interested. Um, Slightly, but I'm also on two other boards uh, for the city of Portland. I'm the president of the Portland Fish Exchange and also a board member of the Portland Fish Beer Authority. So, you know, these meetings kind of tend to stack up. Um, I'm also a businessman that needs to work around the weather. So uh, evening meetings work best for me. So um, oh, you're out. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That's all right. All right. So what I'm what I'm going to suggest is. Um, Once, if there's a conflict in terms of timing and when meetings are, if we need to, based on people's schedules, we may have to get a substitute. Oh, that's, that's a great that's idea. idea. Yeah, right? I mean, until we know. Yeah. Um, but I, Robin, I would ask if you wouldn't mind if you further consider this, um, and for that matter, anybody else who has some interest, uh, to let Autumn and I know as soon as possible. Um, and we can go under that um, concept. And again, if schedules are conflicting, what we'll do is we'll pose the question again to the committee and see if there is anybody else who might be able to handle it. So, okay. um, uh, so council's going to appoint the committee in January. Yep. And they're going to make the list. And maybe it sounds like we could make a recommendation that Robin is our nominee with perhaps Robert or 
Rick as an alternate if Robin can't make it? Right. Does that seem that okay? would be great? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's what I need to package it up. I understand so. that that we've also got to have an answer yeah. before our next meeting. And we have so, to have an answer before I have a schedule. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Chicken and the it's, so, it's definitely is it, that. Are you are you good with that for now, Robin? Uh, yep. Yep. That's fine awesome. with me. I really like the idea of having an alternate. Alternate though, I, I, okay. I'm fine with that. Yep. I, can you all take action on that? I can. Do I? Do we need a, a formal? Uh, yes. Well, all right. Yes. So I move Robin be our nominee to the ad hoc open space committee with the option for Marvin and Robert to be alternatives. Okay. Or alternates. All right. On. So, so we have a first from Portia. Is there a second? Second. Second from Marvin. I have a I have a discussion item in here that has nothing to do with. Well, forgive me. Yeah, let's get let's, along. let's let's right. move Pardon on me. this, and then we'll get back to you. Pardon me. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor. I see that to be unanimous. All right, thank you. Marvin, a discussion point? Uh, to the ad hoc committee voting member list, I did read in the paper and I know others know this, the Scarborough Land Trust has merged or vice versa with the Friends of the Scarborough Marsh. So that adds up to eight voting members. They're going to appoint a member from the Friends of Scarborough Marsh, that okay. board, and yeah. so they'll okay. still have that representation, especially since it's such a new merge. Okay. So, yeah, Got it. Thank I you. spoke to them about that. I think that seems still appropriate. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Our third item that this morning is to discuss and provide guidance to staff concerning a request to consider adding horticulture and landscaping business uses to the rural farming zone. Autumn? Thank you. So last month we didn't get to this, but we had a request from a business owner on Broad Turn Road. They have an existing landscape company. They have, um, they're non-conforming, but they have um, zoning board approval, so they're fine. But the conversation when we've been talking with them is, is this something we should have to get a zoning board of approval for? Is this, should this be non-conforming? And our rural farming zoning district is quite limited in what's permitted. Um, and so this is just a general conversation, no action, just kind of if you all say, hey, maybe we should take a look at that or no, at this time, it's not worth spending the time with it. But it would be looking at uh, horticultural uses. Right now, if you want to do a commercial retail greenhouse, we don't have that as a use anywhere in town. It would have to fall under um, retail sales and services. Yeah, so there's some uses missing, I think. Uh, we also, just this past week, long staff in my office, the zoning administrator, received an inquiry about a farm and being able to do a small winery and doing some different things. Um, and we, we wouldn't allow that with what we have on the books. We don't address quite a few uses. And so this is just me saying, do you think we should address some of these outlier uses and look at our RF district a little bit more um, and see what really should be going on? Or is RF really just about people living and farms? You know, and, and so having those further discussions. I'll jump in. <laughs> May I jump in or? Yeah. Uh, my reflexive reaction to it or, or intuitive, I'm not sure which, is there's so much going on in town and we're addressing so many of the districts, uh, as you described, rural farm. And it's sort of, and I can't, I can't back this up with the <coughs> logic, but my feeling about it is in time, yes, mm -hmm. but now, no, we're dealing with too many other rural farms like, ah, I can breathe. <laughs> yeah. We don't have to jump into, sure. we don't have to change something. We don't have to update it. <laughs> that's, my, that's my take on it. Uh, Go I ahead. Guess, I, would, I would say to kind of in 
not necessarily opposition, but also acknowledgement that a lot of um, small farms and so on are also under a lot of pressure as are fishermen and others who uh, live off the land and an opportunity to do a small greenhouse or some kind of an agritainment, you know, like the maple uh, festivals in the spring and so on, the opportunity for them <clears throat> to obtain more visibility for what they're doing, I think is also important to the long view in this community. We, we say that we're, uh, we highlight the marsh, but also our agricultural roots. Um, this is an opportunity to say to some of our small farmers, you know, come pet the cow or, you know, or, it, 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 opportunities for that. Okay. Robin? Hmm. Yeah, um, it, it's it's interesting. I, I, get, I agree with both Marvin and Portia. Uh, farmers these days are <coughs> have to make ends meet. And that means horticulture, greenhouses, whatever it is, uh, landscaping businesses. The, the issue I have um, is not calling a property management company a landscaping company. There are too many landscaping companies that are actually property management. So they do like, plowing and uh, you know all kinds of things like that. So I guess I am generally in favor of giving the uh, wiggle room, so to speak, to horticulture, which generally means you know garden management um, and landscaping, uh, with the caveat that we don't go to sort of like property management services. That's it. Yes, Robin. I guess I sort of agree with Marvin in a way that um, we're really going down a rabbit hole and branching out to maybe um, something that doesn't need to be looked at at the moment. I mean, everything's sort of circular, right? If we if we change the rural farming, then that can be a, um, a sort of a bowling ball effect where you now have more and more things to control. To me, when I hear rural farming, I'm thinking food. And I think food is very important. However, uh, small farms have to do whatever is fluid enough to make their ends meet. Uh, I don't think uh, landscaping is anything that resembles farming whatsoever. I think landscaping is maintaining your property and, and companies that obviously need to plow in the wintertime because there's no grass to cut. Um, so they need to be able to have the flexibility for their revenue streams to you know, stay in business. But, you know, RF, I mean, it's, it's tax implications here, right? If you get to be in, this, in the RF zone, isn't it a little slightly different property tax? Or it's not, okay. Either way, I think it's rural farm should maintain as rural farm. If somebody wants to become a, a landscaper or whatever, then you need to be in the correct district to do so. Not that you are impacting negatively, but we should encourage as more farms as possible to keep you know local food local and, and carbon emissions down and, and uh, not not handcuff them so they can't expand into revenue streams such as maple sunday or what have you but that's still a food product what what i'm hearing i think is it's not a hot priority but i think something i can do sort of on the back burner is look at our uses and sort of talk about uses and while we maybe don't say oh we can have a winery doing this <clears throat> At least we create some uses because we have a lot of things missing. I then, right now, to legitimately do a landscape business, you have to be in the light industrial, and light industrial is really better served with more viable and, and it's really expensive land. So, but I think we could look at some uses and not make you all have to go through all that pain <laughs> from an economic development perspective. I mean, it goes back to when we just, as autumn was coming on, remember we'd gone through that laundry list of uses and we have like 10 versions of retail and mm -hmm. as many uses as we have, we're also missing all of these uses. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's hard to think about this, particularly if he's able to do what he needs to do right now. Right, he's fine. Good, it's okay, just okay. Just don't wanna, yeah. if it's impacting him, then we should, you mm -hmm. know, let's, let's think about it a little more deeply. But I do think, I do think you want to look at each of these zones in a wider context and look at all of the um, different ways we say the same thing. You know, part of the comprehensive plan says, hey, can we, I hate to use the word simplify, can we, 
can we make the ordinance easier to follow and easier to understand? And I think these uses are part of that. Yeah, I know, but you know, simplify sometimes. <coughs> oh, you're getting rid of things, but that's not oh, it. Oh, yeah. We're consolidating. <laughs> we're making it easier to read rather than a 500 page selling ordinance. But my first instinct when you brought this up this morning was that I believe you started with the fact that it's already a non conforming use that is occurring today. It's permitted, though. It's, it's an approved non -conforming. All right. So while well, where I was going basically was this does not prevent the individual from potentially going to the ZBA, the zoning board. Oh, yeah. He's already and, done it. It's, he's fine. And It's just a broader conversation. And then right. the winery request and Brian and I just sort of going through these requests and thinking, you know, this is a good idea. I don't have a box this fits in, so my answer is always no, right? And so I'd rather have some boxes that things fit in, okay? So I can give, like, ooh, that's a great idea. Sorry, no. I, I think the town would like that. Sorry, no. Or, you know, just that put in some thought into what kind of, because I know other communities are getting a lot of pressure for farmland. And as I'm listening to everybody, sorry, Alan, I just wanted to say, you know, this open space master plan might actually, farmland will have to be talked about during that, right? And how that's conserved and how it's classified. And so maybe what might come out of that, that process is some future ordinance look sees into how we classify farmlands, make it viable to stay. Like what we're willing to let the farmer or the property owner do to keep yep. the land. So maybe that's more appropriate later on. Yeah, I, I, that's, I, I think that's where I'm at right now is the fact that we've got some meaty stuff that we need to finish yeah. in order to move forward from a developmental standpoint, uh, working with the contractors, et cetera, clean up our 405B ordinance. Uh, and I'd rather see us spend our time doing that and maybe address this. If, and, you know, I say when things lighten up a little bit and Lord only knows <laughs> when and if that is going to happen, but um, I would like us to focus on what we're focusing on and then move into that at a later point. I believe Marvin kind of said something similar. Yeah, oh, it's actually. I just had a quick question. Um, not off subject, but when out in Cumberland, they just built this beautiful restaurant in the middle of a farm, set far off Route 9, but so it's just a farm area. It's like a farm to table idea. Yep. Um, would that even be allowed in yeah. Scarborough? No, not if it's zoned rural farming. Yeah. yeah. That's the, and that's, it would have to come in as a contract zone. This is the use you know driving by other yeah. than a small yeah. sign. Yep. Um, and it's, you know, right on the farm that's serving food. Yeah. Right. So, yep. It's beautiful. Yeah. Well, I was asking for a 35,000 foot view uh, moment. And this really is it. As far as mm -hmm. I'm concerned, you're asking a big question. Mm -hmm. That's going to impact <laughs> future. And it is economic development. And as great an idea as that is, and the restaurant and all of that, you do go down a rabbit hole. I mean, we're all adults at the table. And what I'm saying from a 35,000 foot view to, to and this, you know, one vote or one person, I realize, uh, is as good an argument as you're making for um, this gentleman provided a good thing that we'd all like to you participate in. My answer is no. You know, it's it's just no, not right now. Yeah. And, and I, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. no, right. yeah. yeah. Let's go I said to I would item, ask item number four. Discuss and provide guidance to staff concerning a request to consider increasing the height permitted in the TVC district from 45 to 55 or four stories. And before I turn this over, I have a question. Sure. Right out of the gate. Um, are all TVC districts in town right now with the same height restrictions? Uh, no, it's on the table. 
So TVC is uh, up to 45 feet and there's a minimum two stories or 20 feet. That's why the Walgreens. Yep. And then TVC two is 45, TVC three is 45, but 35, um, it's next to a neighborhood, in the neighborhood. Uh, and then TVC four is 40 feet. So the only and reason why- is, We're kind of all over the place. That's why I wanted to yeah. post this here because our height, we have a lot of 45s and then we jumped. Um, and then I don't know if you all had a chance, but I also want to talk about some of the samples so you can see what that feels like. Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm just wondering, do we want to specify as part of this, a particular TVC zone as opposed to making a broad brush all? Well, that was the request was just for the TVC district. Yeah, but we have multiple. We have the TBC one, is one four. district by itself. It doesn't um, have TBC, TBC two, TBC three, TBC four. So if I make a change to TBC, it doesn't change two, three, and four. They're all independent. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Not unless you want to change them all, but they're all. No, they all, that I was. They all have a little bit unique standards and a little bit unique yeah. use. <laughs> I, I understand. Similarities. Having been part of all of that yeah. originally. <laughs> The clarity would have been if we'd said TVC-1. Yes. <laughs> but there's okay. no one. Yeah. I know. It doesn't say one. I know. I know. I know. I, That's you what know, I mean in terms of the, the When scale. I was working on the LD 2003, my goal was to combine mm -hmm. the groups. I couldn't do it. No. I just, there wasn't enough brain space to All right. put them together. So they are different. Um, so, and, and Steve Berg is with us. He is the requester. Uh, he is proposing a four-story multi-use building at Oak Hill on Route 1. So he's got 18 one-bedroom apartments, four two-bedroom apartments, and first floor offices. So it is a mixed-use structure. I think Stephen and I had this conversation right when I started. Right. Um, and so now it's come in a formal request. The, uh, his limitation for the use in the building is height. And so... This is actually um, a rendering of the existing site and then um, what the proposal would look like on the site. It's behind McDonald's there. So this is the four-story structure. And so he's he's made the request for 55 feet, but then when I started looking into it, I said, do you really need 55 feet? That seems awfully tall. And so what it really boils down to is an elevator shaft. And so he's actually at 48 feet with the top of the structure and then the elevator shaft goes up. So that actually gives some additional opportunity for some flexibility that perhaps it's more about uh, where we measure to and then having some percentage or some planning board approval for over that. And it also has some opportunity to just talk about the number of stories that are permitted. And so I went through town. Um, this is actually the diagram of their proposal that they're thinking now. And again, this hasn't gone to planning board or anything, so it's in its infancy stages. But this is the extra space that they need. Um, <clears throat> Sounds like he needs seven more feet to clear his <clears throat> right. structure for his. Right. Uh, and we don't have elevator. any um, variances or anything. There's no, the answer is no. It's not allowed. So you have we have a hard line of 45 feet. There's no uh, flexibility there. So just looking around town, the gateway apartments, they're three stories. Uh, oh, where did my head go on that one? I think it's about 44 feet is what that one was. Part. Carrier Woods is three stories. It's 40 feet from the bottom to the top. And then Piper Shores is four stories. They have 60 feet. Um, they're in a contract zone. The Uplands is four stories. It's in the Crossroads Plan Development District, and they're up at 52 feet. And then the Avesta Housing just across the street here is three stories, and their lowest side is 30, and then they go up to 36 feet. So I just wanted to give you sort of some frame of reference. In my mind, um, these are four stories, and they're very close to the road. Uh, and I go down that way quite often. I don't know if you all, they're not incredibly opposed, imposing to me as I drive through there. Um, they seem to fit. There's mostly three-story structures in the downs and then some four-story. Um, 
these are just very typical apartment complexes. And then what I think Steve is proposing um, really sort of fits on the site nicely. So I guess what I'm saying is my planner brain doesn't have an issue with the request other than it's not allowed. And so the question to you all is, is there an opportunity to look into ways that we could permit something? And it would be as simple as having a um, percentage increase in height up to planning board discretion. That could be a really basic thing. And you could, you could add that across all the districts, uh, which might be allow some flexibility for design because given, look, look, 45 feet, you can do four stories. That's my point. You can have a four story building at 45 feet but you might not like the way it looks. And this one isn't a legitimate mixed use structure. So there's some additional separation that needs to happen. And so can planning board have that purview to say, you're 10% you know, over, we approve that. Uh, but if you were doing this right next to a single family development say, and planning board said, no, you're, you're gonna stay right at the line. So that's just an idea. Um, it doesn't require much from you all to just thumbs up or thumbs down. I could come up with some <coughs> options um, for ordinance language, but that's where I would probably take it. Something pretty simple with some planning board discretion. So are, are we basically in this particular one, mixed use commercial on the first floor with residential on the upper floors? No. <clears throat> okay. So when you mentioned the percentage increase, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> 10% you, you just threw out there. Certainly, if you have a building of that size, 10% is, you're, you're talking about a 10% uh, uh, variance for just a, uh, for instance, for a stairway or for- uh, Yeah, it could be something to that effect. So elevators, of course, are gonna um, allow more uh, flexibility as far as people with wheelchairs. So you're gonna have with a handicap. I would think that that, is something we should probably lean towards allowing handicap accessibility, right? Probably we have to. Uh, there must be some rules for that, right? Anything modern nowadays has to be built with uh, the HCA or whatever that acronym is. Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't have a problem. I definitely don't want to see it continue to creep up. You know, I mean, the town of Scarborough is the town I choose sure, to live in sure. and love. There's cities around that have bigger buildings and that's that's good for the cities, but for towns, I like to see um, certainly a, a, a hybrid requirement. And like that particular <laughs> building with a little box above it, just to, to uh, sort of house the uh, <laughs> elevator shaft. I mean, that's not you know, probably the unsightly to most people. So I was thinking something, it could be something along the lines of adding. So let me go back. So this is, what our zoning categories say now for the yeah, district. Yeah. So there would be, I would add another column is that maximum stories. And so 45 would turn into four, 35 would turn into three and so on. And then there would be a stipulation added um, that would say maybe up to 10, the planning, at the planning board discretion, the planning board through the design or aesthetics, um, the planning board may but up to 10% increase and then exclude with appropriate screening elevator shafts or mechanical things of that nature. So, um, but you'd still have that cap at the four stories. And I think that's the really strong thing. And then you just have a little bit of wiggle room. I don't is know. there a definitive uh, explanation what the story is? How many feet is a story? You could, it's, you could do a story at nine feet. You could do a story at 20 feet. Right. So, but, but there's this, I wouldn't take away the 45 feet cap. Okay. I would say the requirement is a four story building, 45 feet maximum. And then underneath there would be the planning board may approve an up to 10% maximum in height due to um, blah, blah, blah. I don't have that worked out yet. So they could go up, what, four and a half more feet? It's only four and a half feet. It's four and so, a half I mean, that's feet. Less so than 50 feet. They could yeah. have some flexibility for an additional gable or, you know, so a, a deeper, a larger parapet or something like that. Sarah? So, just a FYI, when we, um, when the property across the street by our, our S Village was proposed, um, there was an amendment to the ordinance that removed the four stories, kept the height. 
so that you couldn't go over the height, but the, you know, how somebody orchestrated that 45 feet was left to them. So I don't know whether or not it might be worthwhile to go back. Uh, Jim may have some notes about why the stories were removed, but that was, that was, that was done about that time. Okay. Um, so just checking in. And just as a reminder, the TVC is the most intense of the village centers. And remind me, it's only in Oak Hill and Dunstan, correct? Mm -hmm. So, and, and then from the TVC, it radiates out. So there's, a, it, it phases. So you've got TVC and then TVC two sort of surrounds it and then TVC three. So it was a graduated, um, you know, decrease in types of things that you can do uh, and in bulk and mass in terms of what each of those zones mean. So TVC is, the TVC itself is, is very restricted in terms of uh, location. Okay. Um, one, more, one more comment. Uh, as I was arriving here this morning, the traffic uh, southbound on, on, um, on one, people weren't able to pull in to drop their kids off at school. All these uh, additional things of development are sort of gonna add more to our incredibly uh, complex and potentially problematic traffic issue. It, in both those areas, Oak Hill and, and Dunstan are the two key places pretty much, in, except for maybe Payne Road area, that you know we have issues of traffic. It's only gonna get worse as we add more and more levels of housing and not that I'm afraid of adding more housing. We certainly have a crisis in Portland and other areas. So slippery slope, we gotta just make sure we, you know, keep our, our eye on the picture and eye on the prize of what's the correct and, and uh, assumable uh, responsibility for our, our development. Well, and this, yeah. and to be fair, we, the housing is allowed there by right. It's allowed. So it's allowed there. Yeah. We're not talking about the sure. use or anything. We're just talking about getting mixed use, which is kind of cool. And something that the comp plan really and the town has said they want that opportunity. He could get rid of the, can you get rid of the first floor? <laughs> the cool first floor? No, I mean, I just want you to know that the, the housing is permitted there. Um, and when he, everyone comes in through the site plan process, a traffic impact analysis is required. If a certain number of trips is required, they have to do a traffic movement permit through DOT and offsite improvements may be required. So there's a lot that goes into the approval and review of all that great stuff. Too. I have to have my two I've, cents. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was good. I, I guess I'm. You're next. Go ahead. I'm totally <laughs> different. All right. I'm totally different from where you're at. Um, I'm going to preface this by saying that in our last two comp plans, we have been very, very specific about where we want growth in our community. And I have personally felt that if we're going to meet the demands that are gonna come after us. One, with the fastest growing community in Southern Maine. Two, there have been studies that have come out that have been shared regarding uh, specific growths, growth, not only within Scarborough, but in the state. Um, you know, when we were at the Downs and the governor spoke, she indicated there, expect a 20% growth uh, basically within the next 10 years. Um, I see no way for us to meet our goals and objectives of where we want the growth to occur if we don't go up. Hmm. We're not going to get there. And the more we can focus on certain areas for growth in our community, the more chance we have to help our transportation issue. Because now if we can keep it all in one spot or, you know, 
certain spots, we can start to look at public transportation and some of the other things that are gonna help us reduce the amount of traffic we're gonna have. So my personal view is we need to go up. <laughs> I, am, I am not in favor of providing a 10% buffer, pick a number to the planning board and say it's available for this because we're going to get right back into the same problem of what's the use for that additional space? And they're going to be constantly challenged because it may not just be an elevator shaft or a stairway shaft. They're going to keep coming back to us. They developers they are going to keep coming back to us saying, we, well, what about this? Or what about this? We're going to have to keep functioning on changing what's allowed and what's not allowed. I, I don't think we're going to be able to have a comprehensive list that's going to meet everybody's wants and desires. So personally, if we're going to allow, pick a number, 50 foot, whatever it is, to the next spot, we pick the number. And that's it. You know, I mean, with the exception of a potential chimney, <laughs> which you have to elevate above the roof anyway, I think we just do it. If we say we're going to allow 55 feet or pick a number, 60 feet, we've got a, you know, a, a six-story limitation uh, in, the, uh, in another district here in town, you know, if we're going to pick one, what better one to pick one where we're going to have where we want the growth? And people can walk to the grocery store, they can walk to the library, they can, you know, exactly. so, so it cuts down ultimately on the small trip. Yeah, exactly. So I think if we're going to look at this, let's look at it and let's pick a number that we're willing to say we think we can live with. So I, I just think we're wasting time by looking at a small number and now trying to play with, well, we'll give them 10 extra feet because they got an elevator shaft. Baloney, pick the number. Let's do it. I love it, Alan. Robin did everything. Robin, that's okay. Robin. Um, well said, Alan. And um, I think uh, if we're talking Oak Hill, you know, we're on a public transportation line. We have the public infrastructure to support this. Um, you know, the, the only two, I have two or three concerns. One is, do we have the fire ladder high enough to go up to 5B? Two, um, so in construction and engineering, the high rise uh, elevations change, the rules and the codes change at 75 feet. Um, I have no problem even with 75 feet in Oak Hill, but I don't wanna see these high rises west of the turnpike where there's not the public infrastructure, where there's not the public transportation, where you're, you know, that kind of thing. So if we can keep it in, you know, Route one corridor, designated growth areas, that type of thing. I say go for it up to 75 feet. Thank you, Rob. I cut you off, Marvin. I'm sorry. No, you didn't. I, I agree with you uh, on the one hand, insofar as, as I object to changing anything based on a single mm -hmm. application. And, and as good as anything is, it's just that's not what we do. Uh, and you're sort of saying the same thing. Let's not consider this elevator shaft or the other, the other point I wanted to make, and obviously your experience on the planning board, Alan, speaks for itself. So your authority in that area, I uh, respect and value. However, as soon as I hear will allow the planning board, we've already said this, to do a little bit here and a little bit there. I hear Rachel going, my gosh, in heaven, uh, we've, got a, we've got enough and we avoid those kinds of stopgap measures, generally speaking. So without Rachel here to say yes or no, I would just, then, then I would defer to you. Uh, really, that's it. As far as 70, I mean, I'd like to think about it for a second if we're talking the difference between 55 and 75 feet with all due respect. Robin, I'm not quite ready for that leap. I need another cup of coffee, but uh, <laughs> uh, and that's it. 
Well, the interesting right. thing, and I talked to Alan about this earlier, there was an article this morning in the Portland um, Press Herald. Now, we went up to Falmouth and saw those two buildings that were built in the parking lot, right? In fact, Marvin, you commented on yeah, those two buildings. Yeah, I remember. Falmouth is furious because they're too high. They're 65 feet. So if you want an example of a 65-foot high building, that's it. Well, conceptually, we're, we're talking about a con conceptual change. I understand. I'm and, just saying and, in terms of being able to, to get the perspective on it, um, Falmouth's a society, they don't want anything over 40, 40 feet, something like that, 45 feet. Um, so we're already there. I guess I'm, I'm open to saying, you know, a higher building in, in a certain location like Oak Hill would not bother me again because it concentrates yeah. um it's with residential access without having to get in a car which continues I, to be my it's issue. a the height of building i i my professional life adult life i've lived in washington dc i've lived in new york city washington has the nothing higher than right. the washington monument it provides whole idea of where you're living and it has an appreciation. New York obviously doesn't right. have that. <laughs> provides it's a whole lot of benefit. Yeah. Uh, so you're really talking about where do you want to live? Yeah. What do you want? I realize we're not talking about 6,000 feet or what. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's where you approach the subject. And maybe I'm not the voice of one there, but I think you have to approach it from from a conceptual point of view, right. and it, then you live with it, and it makes a big difference. In Neither is wrong or right. In, in terms of height, I think that the zone right now will we allow the highest height of elevation was a six-story building, which is in the Running Hill Road area, ironically enough. Um, and it, mm -hmm. No, no. Running Hill is forty-five feet. The data, the BOR up there, there's just a little bitty bit on yes. every one. Yes, yes. That's uh, seventy-five feet. That's, Seven, all right. And then the CPD is seventy-five feet. Yep. And then I, I will mm -hmm. clarify that most of these also have some built-in residential adjacency buffers and height limitations if you're next to the neighborhood, sort of that thing too. So those are already. In the I, mean, I ask a question that shows my ignorance. Uh, you mentioned one of the buildings, as an example, is in a contract zone. Yes. And therefore, they're able to do an X. They're still within their standards. They're just a contract. Okay. So, so Hydrosaurus so sure. can go up to 60 feet mm -hmm. because they're in a contract mm -hmm. zone. Okay. If this gentleman's building, can this gentleman's building be a kind of contract zone be created so the, for this gentleman's building? If we just adhere to the state requirements, yes. But Scarborough has a special requirement called a public benefit clause. And um, so uh, he would have to <laughs> say that he has some sort of public benefit and provide that. It could be in the it affordable housing cool. realm. He could say that I need this to do a contract. But how, for lack of a better word, how silly would it be for him to do a contract zone for? This, right? No, I, I, you well, know, for 36 in inches. In an area where we want to focus, right? Okay. I, I just yeah. can't yeah. get away so, from that. So, but my, my point is, time is of the essence. Mm -hmm. I trust this, this gentleman. I told you I was bad with names. Steve. 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 I, Steve, time's of the essence. He wants to get something done. Uh, the conceptual argument that we're having is operating in a different realm of time. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. and, and I understand. I would think a benefit would be having a nice big building with, you know, but that's, that's a, I, I think he's proved the public benefit in a certain sense, but that's, pardon me, I digress. Okay. Okay. Um, probably would take longer to do that. It would, yeah, yeah. That for all of us yeah. to have right. discussion. As it should. And as, a, as an ex-planning board member, contract zones just make me cringe. So I, <clears throat> I mentioned ignorance. I, but I'm just saying <laughs> if that's just, you know, there are times and places for contract zones, but I would like us to try to minimize that if at all possible. It's just an unbelievable expense for the applicant. Yeah. 
And they should be really unique yeah. things yeah. that we would never be able yeah. to plan for, consider. Yeah. And in, in the town, it considers, you know, if we were to go 75 feet, would that, would you rethink your plan? I think there's other logistical issues like parking that come into play and the size of the lot. I mean, this one, we, we want to maximize what we thought was realistic. Um, again, one of the things and I know you mentioned about the side of presidential, but if you can bring that picture back up that shows that we proposed and, um, and that's to scale, actually. We, the, the reason we, you know, we uh, proposed that was it was set back from Route 1 because that was the thing that bothered me about the Falmouth buildings. You know, when I first looked at them, and they're right out on the street. Right. They're right in your face, and then you have all the two-story right around this. By taking the height, you know, the existing two-story minimum requirement, like with McDonald's, which isn't really two stories, but you got that height. You're not looking straight up here. As you look from Route 1, um, and this is just a Google traffic or a Google map photo, but they superimposed the, Sebago superimposed the uh, proposed building in. It's it's not a line of height where it's in your face. It was, you know, set back enough. And, you know, those are the type of requirements. I don't know if you're making the changes you need to add it something, up, you know, so it isn't, you know, you don't put a 60 or 50, Five foot or four story building right on Route One, because I, you know, although this building is pretty tall, I don't, and I don't know where you measure the height on this. You know, if you're measuring from the parking lot down below, it's a fairly tall building right on Route One. It's not that bad. It fits in. You're driving by. You don't say, "Oh, that's really out of place." Well, yeah, you've got the hill. It's like yeah. yeah, and that's the same thing with Oak Hill, where uh, where Walgreens up in the corner. It's, I think the roof line at Walgreens would be fairly similar to the roof line. You know, as the crow flies across, like elevation line, you know, above sea level. Um, so that's why we, you know, came to this as opposed to, oh, we want to build a really tall building. No, is, you know, to be able to get enough, because we're the proposal for the building is more of a workforce housing type idea with what, mostly one bedrooms. Um, to focus it where the teachers and, you know, this, that's why we want to do this at Oak Hill. We did another building just down the street with this mixed use concept to see if it would work. When we first proposed it, people were like, you gonna put apartments in the middle of a shopping center? Well, let's try it, you know, and there's eight units there. They've been full less since the day we put them in. Um, and the office downstairs, it, it works well. There's a good use with them, um, an office user on the first floor. Um, nighttime, you know, they're gone, the apartments, people are in there. So you've got the mixed apartment too. Exactly. And we have more than enough of that there. I mean, if you look at the parking lot day or night, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. never, you know, it's never a limit of the market. Robin? I, I don't think it's quite fair to, to paint with a broad brush. Uh, this, this public safety building is sort of for the you know, greater good of our entire community where um, an eight unit certainly is, is, is uh, beneficial to, you know, eight families potentially. This is to support the entire community of Scarborough, right? If, if we decide that for the greater good, our school may be taller, our next school, if we ever get a chance to build one or, or add on to the current schools, uh, it's not quite the same as, as for residential, in my opinion. Um, you know, the greater good here is to, is to keep as many people that are in Scarborough happy, and then obviously we're going to have growth. And what number that growth is, is, you know, you mentioned 20%, and I think that may be well uh, is, is far, unless we can throttle back, right? And that, that's what we're here for. Um, yeah, the topography, of course, uh, because it's on a hill, this does fit in. But, like, I wasn't really big on a giant public safety building, but we're here, we're getting to use it, and then we have, you know, infinite uh not infinite, but we shouldn't have to build another one of these for a hundred years, hopefully, or ever, right? We, we, we did it once, maybe we're good. And it's big, but it's big enough and, and it serves the community. Um, we're chewing a lot of time on this, I know, yeah. and I don't want to continue to add to that, so. Hey, you know, I, I'd like to throw something out, I guess. Um, I would like to ask this committee to consider a height limit of 65 feet. And let me see if I can explain my rationale there. Currently, we're allowing four story buildings, I believe. I think we need to make a jump, but I think we need to make a jump that is not something that's going to last us for five years, like, because I don't want to keep revisiting this. 
So I'm suggesting something that's closer to six stories, it's roughly 10 to 11 feet a story. Um, at least it was when I was doing what I was doing um, in a past life. But the other thing is, is it, with respect to what Robin said regarding 75, the only reason why I'm suggesting maybe not a jump quite that much is that we need to get the council to accept whatever we propose. I don't know that the council will take a 30 foot increase. I could be wrong, but I'm not sure that they would jump quite that far this quick. And so in order to try to help alleviate some of the issues that we have a little bit longer term than maybe with just a one story increase, I'm suggesting a two story increase to try to fulfill that need and not have to revisit it again in a short period of time. So that's how I came up with my number. And the only thing I'll offer is if you do a six story building that's 60 feet, you're always gonna have flat roofs. And that's probably appropriate at a six story height. But just keep in mind that yep. that extra 15 feet or so does give you opportunity for cables. So, yes. I, 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 I just, uh, I mean, we have to talk so, basically Oak Hill. Oak Hill. We're to, uh, you, you, for me, you have to talk about feet or you have to talk about stories and you can't talk about both. It's 65 feet is what I'm saying. Yeah, and I, I would say based on the Piper Shores, uh, which as far as I can tell is the highest building currently exempted here from what's current, what we have, I would say 60. I don't know why you they have a four story with cables at 60 feet. There you go. But I think Alan, you're trying to say we should be able to do six stories. And Marvin's trying to say don't mix the two. So is it yeah. four stories or six stories? No, nobody builds feet. Stay with feet. I like stay feet. with feet. Okay. Some simpler mathematics. You're a you know, it's a bait and switch. Kind yeah. Of yeah. I think some of what you don't some of what you don't see potentially with Piper Shores is the ground elevation surrounding that building so on a case-by-case -case basis my theory is 60 feet is the max right now we're going from 45 and they, you know yep. you'll prove me wrong uh i'm just saying we have 60 that's a good height let's 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 not push it beyond that i see two two districts that allow 75. right that's this the downs yeah. and then uh, the business office research, really small area, Aubrey one, cost remainment. They have. Yeah. Okay. And then we have 60 feet is our next level. Mm -hmm. I don't need to throw a monkey wrench. No, no, no. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. So are we thinking 60 feet for TVC as a maximum height? Portia? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of with Alan in are we get nickel and dime at this stuff? Should we just go for 65 and call it a day? If we're willing to tolerate 65, um, which, you know, is certainly possible in some other locations, you know. Well, we had a developer here only wants 45, right? Right. For this right. project, there yeah. be something down the road. It was 50, but I think limiting 55. where, you know, it's not going to be right on one mm -hmm. and it's going to be an okay. Um, I, I think with that limitation, it says we want a concentration of so, development in this area. So not not to be rude, but would you stand up for a second? <laughs> you will find out. That's about the difference we're talking here between 60 and 65. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking a Porsche height. Oh, Porsche, Porsche height. Well, 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 actually, it's 45 feet. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> but my point is, we're not talking that yeah. much, and it is the difference between five and six stories. If we go six feet, it's very difficult to get a six story. But we're still at four stories if we're doing what. That's why I was sort of proposing. Yeah. I always come in at my at a conservative like. We can make this work if we do this very minimal change, but it's still a four-story building. Yeah. But if you're proposing, you know, let's go up to six, then that's a different and it's still It allows people to do some more design modification too, gables and 
We've, it's, it's a, you're, you're, you're talking about making a fairly significant change. We do in still the course have of a few minutes. 45 to 65. Not correct, right? 45 so, to 65 is what I'm suggesting. We haven't yeah, done anything I'm... to density and we haven't done anything to parking. So we've just, um, we've what we've done is here's your building. We've done this, right? So we've lessened the footprint right. of the building, which is a good thing. It's yes. less impervious cover. It's more opportunity for green space. Right now you have 15% impervious pervious cover, so it's really minimal. So we've in we've kind of consolidated that footprint, which is a good thing for all of our natural resources as well, and for stormwater and for. Um, it also means you could put parking underneath the building. It's possible. Yeah, you can do that. Well, but, yeah. in terms yeah. of being but if you able have to get that extra height, you certainly right. do that. And make those um, you would have shelter parking like they did in South Florida. I was going to say, like, like the Night Vale area. I mean, it's it's more compact. It's more about. compact. You're having less impact. On You're still the, going up two stories. Yeah, I mean, you know, all the all your rationale is fine, and I respect it, and, and do may it. agree with some of it. You know, that's not the that's issue that I'm talking about. You're, uh, you're you're making a significant change to the heights of buildings in these in the two zoning districts, right? Right. So the one zoning not, TBC one. TBC. I would not be prepared. Or just TBC. To vote no, in favor of that. Of that. This meeting, if you okay. wanted to suggest that we table it and bring it back up next meeting, I don't know. We have to come back with that language. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 So and this, this is just yeah. hey, what do you guys? Well, if we're if we're talking direction. about motion, and, uh, and I didn't like I that. did not make it a motion okay. intentionally. I just trying to so, <clears throat> indicate my thought process or my rationale. I can also show you some good. I think it'll be helpful to see where these districts are on the map. We can actually physically go. TBC is here, and this is where you'd have. Yeah, the map would be right. Here. Yeah, I think that'd be really helpful, and then I can do the version. My, my conservative, wishy-washy version, and then I can do the maximum version, and then maybe some in-betweens for next time. I'm going to pull the comprehensive plan language, because yes. I think there's comprehensive plan language that that supports this. So yeah. let's let's ground it in that okay. um, so that you can check off, hey, are we are we implementing something from the comprehensive plan? Yeah. And I think that's a, yeah. uh, a good way to look at it. All right. I'd also like to look oh, at uh, That's all right. Uh, just I know there was the mention of infrastructure and public transportation by Robin and Portia, and then, which is great, but I'm going to wager that most everybody here drove in their own vehicle. Um, and, you know, it's wonderful to have public transportation, but I don't know how much it's actually used. Um, I suppose if you don't have a vehicle, then you'll use it. And if you don't have bus stops or. Yeah, so we're, we're kind of. identify that there's actually kind of a bus far from. Yeah. yeah. Far from that infrastructure yeah. uh, actually have been helpful, no. yes. But you do want to have it sort of uh, in, in the right area of density and, 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 and uh, centralized. All right, so what I'd like to do is I, I do want to listen to what Robin has to say. Time check, we've only got about five minutes left. And I do want to get to uh, our other comments before this is over. So Robin? Yeah, um, I guess my comments are twofold. One is, um, Whatever we propose, whether it's 60 or 65 feet, um, it's my understanding that this would go to council and they could cut it down however they wanted, correct? So I'd rather ask for 65 and have them cut it down to 60 or 55 or whatever. My second comment is um, 65 feet, uh, as, as Amber mentioned, 60 feet is only gonna get us a flat roof. So to sort of Marvin's point, 65 feet would give us more architectural diversity in the designs and plans that we see. And then lastly, we've got to think diversity anyway and stop thinking, oh, how many of us drove here? Because we're planning for the future. We're not planning for right now. We're, ta we're talking about you know, 10, 20, 50 years from now, we have a housing crisis. We need to put people in places. Uh, to live, and this is exactly where we want people to live, is along Route 1. Thanks. All right, thanks, Robin. Uh, it would appear that item five on the agenda is not going to have much action today. I <laughs> would agree with that. Uh, uh, sorry about that. I would go, however, to our next item, 
public comment. I don't see anybody online, but Mr. Berg, is there any public comment you'd like to make? Um, no, I think not. Okay. Right. Yeah, may I have a point, point of order here? I, I apologize. Uh, before we leave, and maybe it's too late, the discussion about the height, uh, the 65 foot height. Why can't we consider 75 feet? I don't say we can't. We can't. So I, if you're putting together a proposal for next time, uh, want to see the full range. Of, I mean, yeah. I'm not sure if anybody's proposing going higher than that, but uh, I would like to not hamstring yourself. Yeah. Something yeah. about 75 feet might convince me that 65 is better. Or yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I really think that's a, you know, let's think about that. And at the next meeting, we'll toss it around again and we'll see what the consensus is from a number of perspectives. So I'll go back to staff comment and Karen. Uh, no, I'm good. All right, Autumn. Let's see. I think I've made enough comments. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we have a, our uh, planning board meeting is on Monday. It's our last one for the year. Um, that's party. Yeah. Oh. Holiday party. <laughs> oh, no. I just want to say this has been a fantastic year with you all. Um, and we've gotten a lot of work done. In January, we will elect our chair and vice chair. Um, so all of our great commercial design standard work. Okay. Eric? I'm all set. Thank you. We're all set. Uh, Robin, I'll start with you. Any, any additional comments this morning? No, just that I really appreciate working with this uh, committee over the year. Thank you. Okay. Portion. Marvin. Trans transportation committee liaison report is that the transportation committee meeting was uh, postponed this month and will be postponed again next month. Okay. So if I'm understanding correctly, we meet in February. Uh, no, we'll have a January 9th. We're trying to uh, finalize the thing, but it'll be in January. Uh, Tom told me that that was going to be canceled. Um, no. Okay. No, we're still working on that one. Okay. I should go out. I, the date right now is about 75% January 9th. Okay. That's it. All right. I've only got a couple comments brief here. Next meeting is scheduled for January 12th of 2024. Yes. And finally, I'd like to wish each and every one of you are very happy holiday season and a happy new year. Likewise. And we'll see you. Yes. I just wanted to. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for the warm welcome. And I hope I didn't uh, get everybody off sidetracked with just bringing me up to speed. I know first time uh, person with the meeting. Is there, um, because I introduced myself and know, you guys know my background, I don't know anybody else's. Is there a spot where there's bios for, of the members or? Can everybody yeah. just tell me what they do? Because I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, or I know you guys are staff, but are you? Uh, Marvin Gates. I yeah. live at 423 Block Point Road. Oh, that's really specific. I just. I, grew up, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, know where, I don't need to know where you live. I grew, I grew up uh, uh, here uh, summers, and my grandfather uh, came back in 2013. Bought the property I just described. Uh, resident here since 2016. And. Uh, I, uh, I'm a, by training and profession, I'm a painter and artist, and I have a, a small business here that's a, a, a seasonal uh, contemporary art gallery where I show other people's work as well. Um, I also sit on the uh, Coastal Waters and Harbor Committee, uh, recognizing to your degree, that uh, it is what makes Scarborough unique in a certain sense. It's coastline. Yeah. And uh, so uh, that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Robin, do you have time to comment? Just the, the elevator speech, you know, 30 seconds. Yep. I've lived in Scarborough since the, um, the late 90s. I'm an engineer by trade. Um, 
have my own side business doing water resource management for Taco River as a as a, basically a river keeper. Um, but my day job by day, I am a project manager for the city of Westbrook, and I am uh, I used to be on the planning board, and now I'm happy to be on the long range planning. That's it. Portia. Um, I'm from Booth Bay Harbor, so we have our own approach to the ocean, but... Um, You're I, from Booth Bay Harbor now? No. Okay. No, I, live in, I live in Scarborough now. I grew, yep, up, yep. grew up in Booth Bay Harbor. Actually, East Booth Bay. And I used to lobster with my uncle. Anyway, um, I am a construction engineer, construction engineer by trade, um, now retired, and living here in Scarborough. We've been here 15 years. My husband said he wanted to be closer to health care. <laughs> Since, good, good decision. Since <laughs> keeps closing down. I will add that Portia is a well-renowned world traveler. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. And you want to get on the list. So yeah. You want to always see her photos and to know more about where she's going. In the West, camping in January. So I will oh. join you again. Like nice I did last year. She has retired well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'll add Portia because of something I. You're an ordained Episcopal priest. I am right? ordained Episcopal priest, yeah. yes. Right. So, so I do supply work like information you didn't yeah. otherwise want to review. So I travel around the state and supply work on Sundays. So that keeps me off the trouble lanes. So I am a, I was born and raised in this wonderful state of Maine. I unfortunately spent uh, seven years outside of the state of Maine. Shame on you. Chasing a job, but that's okay. Um, what town you grew up in? I grew up in Old Town. Old Town. Um, home of the Great Canal. Yeah. Yes. And I have some. And an Indian reservation. Yeah. Um, I, I've been working um, on committees such as this. In fact, I'm just finishing my 20th year. Wow. Um, started on the planning board moved to what was then the Comprehensive uh, Plan and Implementation Committee, which became Long Range Planning. I'm also a very happy member of SEDCO that Karen is the Executive Director of. Um, and I've been on the Transportation Committee shortly, the Library Board of Directors, and I don't know what else, but, oh, and when I have nothing else to do, I work the elections. There you go. Um, so, yeah, I've just been around for a while and really enjoying this. And I will tell you, in my personal opinion, you are on the best committee sitting in that chair. Even though the sun gets. Even though the sun right. gets. Yeah. So, yeah, this a lot happens here and it's all in the background and it's all uh, very influential on what occurs in the town. How long is this? Uh, committee been uh, established since the last since the 2006 comprehensive plan. Oh, six, yeah. Yeah. It was okay. yeah. yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Um, did you want to comment on the uh, dredging project since you're on that committee, or is I drive by it almost every day? Well, do we, want, we, do we want to adjourn. Yeah, we should do that. Uh, I'll take a motion to do that. I'll motion to adjourn. We have Thank a motion. Portia. Robin. Uh, Robin second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? I show that to be unanimous, Robin. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye, Thank Robin. you.